here is a tricky problem for you to solve let's say you got some values like this and you want to calculate running totals here and running averages here do you know that calculating cumulative averages in excel is hard in this video let's understand how to calculate cumulative averages that is when you have got some numbers and you want to average them but the average needs to consider more values as the list is going down i'm going to show you a really simple solution but then we are also going to look at more complicated ones that scale well when your data changes let's take a look at this so the running total is easy you can kind of go sum and select the first number open this and close it like that c6 to c6 and if you place the cursor inside c6 and hit f4 you're gonna lock the reference just the initial part of the reference and now if i just drag this down i'm gonna get the totals while this is all right this is kind of a manual technique because if, if we don't know how far these values are going we will have to drag this that many times so there is a better technique here first up let me demonstrate that and then i'm gonna give you the running average challenge so excel 365 now has a new function called scan what scan does is it scans a list of values so in this case these values and as it is scanning it can do an operation the operation can be anything in this case we want to sum so what it would do is it will for example start with initially a value of zero and then for the first number it's going to take 10 and then add that to 10 0 plus 10 would be 10 for the second number it will take the previous sum so it will be already 10 and then add the current number 20 so 10 plus 20 would be 30 and then for the third number it will start with 30 and then add this 30 fourth number 60 and then 40 like that so i'm going to show you initial value is 0 and this is my array and the function that we want to use is sum when you do that you will get the running total the advantage of this technique is it automatically fills down based on how much data you have so right now we have got 10 numbers but imagine you have got two more numbers 110 and 120 i just have to come here and change my array just expand it like that and i'll get my running totals here this is a beautiful way now how are we going to do the running average pause here and think about it this is a tricky challenge and it requires a little bit more thinking than what we have at disposal i'm going to show you three options the first one is really easy but it is manual which is we could use the same technique as sum which is you can say average select the first number and press colon and then make it like this c6 to c6 and place your cursor in the first c6 and lock it absolute like that and then just drag this down we will get this so this is one way of running average you can double check these results so for example first 10 numbers add up to 550 so the first 10 numbers average would be 55 which is correct whereas first nine numbers add up to 450 so their average would be 50 so this kind of works out all right now the problem with this is it is a manual thing again if i add more numbers then i'll have to make sure that i'm dragging this down so it is a little bit clunky to work with but it does work and it gives you the result let's try second option uh, before we try this you might think we could use scan for this as well so you we can say scan i want to start with nothing not even zero select these values and instead of sum, i'm going to say average and this is exactly what one of my customers actually did they tried this they didn't get the result they came back to me so this is coming up with this now pause here and think why these numbers are not matching so if you look at the correct answer here and the wrong one here they're not matching so what could be the reason the reason here is as it goes down what scan does is for example first number it does match second number it matches the disconnect happens from the third number onwards so let's take a closer look of what is happening for scan so with scan for the first number we're not starting with anything so when it is reading initially it only sees this much and it says average of 10 one number this works out fine so for the second number it takes the 10 this value and then takes the 20 and averages both so 10 and 20 average it together 15 works out fine when it comes to the third number this is where things start to go a little bit crazy because now it is taking this 15 and then comma this 30 
So it is averaging these two numbers and that's why this value comes up as 22.5. Whereas the correct way to average this is not to take 15, but actually take all the three numbers and then average them. So that's what a cumulative average would be. It is basically averaging everything from the starting point up until that point. Whereas what scan is doing is for each number, it is taking that and the previous cumulative, previous average. So this would be 30 and 20, 15. That's why 22.5. For the fourth number, it is 40 and 22.5. That's why it comes up to be 31.25 and it keeps going like that. So this is a wrong option. Um, it doesn't really matter what the initial value is. If you give initial value as zero, these are numbers are going to be different because it will assume that there is an initial value of zero and then it will average zero and 10 and that's why that number also comes up wrong. So this is a wrong way. The correct way would be instead of uh, using that, we could use a different technique. And this technique is because we can already calculate the sum, the running total itself, if I can also get a running count, I can just divide one with another and calculate the average. So I'm going to show you what the running count looks like. So running count is nothing but scan, sorry, scan with, start with zero, scan this array. And as you're scanning, we want to use a Lambda function here. So Lambda and what scan does is that uh, the lambdas inside scan, they take two input values, A and B or A and C, it doesn't really matter what you call them. And so A is the accumulated value so far and B is the current value. It's the same order as these two. So initially when this Lambda runs, A will be zero and B will be C6. The next time it will be whatever is the result of Lambda will be in the A and B will be the next value C7. If you've never done scan at all in your life, then this might seem a bit confusing, but if you've already used it, then it will start to make sense. So here what we want is we want to ignore B altogether and just do A plus one. So essentially what this is, does is as it scans this array at each time A is incremented. So we'll get a running count of one to 12, but this is just same as how many values are there. If I have got 12 values here, I'll get 12 items here. There's another way of doing this running count as well. I'll call this as running count two. And here we could use a sequence, sequence of count A of my array. How many values are there in my original list? Generate a sequence of that many. So this is much simpler than this kind of a scan notation, but I wanted to introduce this way of thinking for you so you could use it elsewhere. So now that these numbers are there, I can just take my running total and divide with running count to get running averages. So this is where I can say, scan from zero these values sum divide that with this kind of a logic which would be scan zero these values lambda a b a plus one so this is going to produce the correct averages you can see these numbers all matching so this is another way of doing that this is obviously much more long winded, but it is a dynamic option. You might be thinking, hey Chandu, why do we need to go all through this? We can have this directly. The advantage of this is if your data is changing, you have got a different set of numbers, then you can use this and it automatically spills down. So thinking about spillable formulas in a do once and use forever approach is much better. Pause here and think if you can come up with another way of doing this. Now I'm going to show you the third option, which is to write our own logic for doing this cumulative sum. It is a bit more convoluted, but it does definitely work. So to do this, we'll need to first understand some more functions. So we have seen scan. Now let me show you the take function. What take function that is, does is if I say take and if I give it a range and then say take three, it's going to take the first three elements. If I just say average of that, it's going to average that and come up with 20. So essentially what we want is as we are scanning this array, as we are going down this list, we want to first for the first value, we want to take one value and average it for the second values. We want to take two values and average it for the third value. We want to take three values and average it. So we just want to, as we are going down the list, we want to take more numbers and average them. That's really what we want. 
So take can do one part of it. Uh, there is another function called map. What map does is, if you give it a list, it can map consistent logic. So same logic for all the elements and return a new list. So for example, if I say map this array, and I'm gonna say lambda, for map you have to give a lambda. So map will only take one argument because initially we have only one list. So the lambda will take one parameter and then if I say a plus one it's basically going to add one to all the items here and then return a new mapped array so that's what mapping is every element of the initial list will have a newly mapped value so now that we have got map and we can take we can mix them together this is going to be a little bit more confusing but definitely worth it so stay with me and watch this so we're going to make a let function because the logic is a bit more longer. I thought using let will simplify the process. We're going to declare a variable called R and store our array there. So R is C6 to C17 and I'm going to make it absolute like that. And then I'm going to make a variable called R count, which is how many values are there in this array. And that would be count A of R. So now we have got two variables. R has the list and our count will have 12 because there's 12 items there. So the next thing that we want to do is now that we have the array and the count, we can make a sequence. I'm going to call this as SQ, uh, which would be sequence of our count. So the sequence would be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 until 12. Essentially what we are getting in the running count, that's the same thing. The sequence will generate that. So far you're with me. Now I'm going to alt enter and get into a new line and in this line we are going to write the logic. The logic would be to map the sequence. So map sq on a lambda, lambda and then a. So this a would be each of the elements of the sequence. So initially it will be 1, then 2, then 3, then 4 like that. So for each element we want to take from the array that many elements. So from this array, that many elements, but it's not enough we take, we need to average it. So we're going to average that and close all the brackets and we will get the output here. Again, this is one of those gnarly complicated functions, but it's not that complicated. It, all it is doing is it's kind of specifying in the way Excel can understand that I want you to do a running average as you're going down the list and then tell me what the values are. So this is uh, where this kind of a let, we could have not used let and still gotten that result, but that would look even more complicated. So using let to declare some temporary variables and using that to drive the logic would make it simple. That way, if I want to have it for a different array, I just have to change this and everything else will fall in place. So there you go. Cumulative averages are tricky, but this is how you can do it. Of course, if you're not using formulas, then if you're using pivot tables or something else, then doing it will be slightly different. But with formulas, this is how you can do it. How did you do it? Let me know in the comments. I'll catch you there. Bye.